Oh, well, first of all, thanks, thanks again for having me. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to hear that you not only found me online, but that message kind of resonated with you. So uh, when I first started putting this together, I was actually going through a really rough season um, in 2020 with my health, uh, physically and, and mentally, just kind of going through a rough spot. And I was at my lowest low. And I remember being at my parents' house and lying down in the backyard. I, I used to just lie down in the hot sun with my shirt off just to feel better. I just I was trying to gain some energy from the sun and just get some life into me again. But again, just really at my lowest low and thinking, man, this is the biggest challenge I've, I've had to overcome in my entire life, you know, and I trained jujitsu for 14 years. I started in 07, right out of high school, I was 18 years old. And um, even having to navigate, you know, the the journey that is jujitsu and starting off as a white belt and having to face uh, not only higher belts but higher belts that were also a lot bigger and um, just more physically you know gifted I would say was was a challenge but that was nothing compared to what I was going through uh, I remember thinking man I'll give it all back you know or I'll give up so much just to have my health back and so I realized through this journey that. Now, without my health, I don't really have much, you know, so um, during that same, uh, you know, day where I was out in the backyard, I remember thinking, again, this is the biggest challenge I've had. That always resonated with me, uh, resonated with me as, um, you know, a man of faith for one, but two, just because I was always the smallest kid growing up in high school, you know, or elementary, middle school, high school, and then uh, playing baseball. You know, one of my nicknames was Little B. Another nickname was Armrest. My teammates would just come up next to me and put their arm on my shoulder and lean on me like I was the perfect size for their their armrest. You know, and so I got um, uh, bullied a lot, um, a little physically and a lot verbally, and just taken advantage of because I was small and I didn't really have a way to stand up for myself at the time. Uh, I, I Again, didn't have a martial arts background growing up. I just played baseball and uh, I don't know. I was just known for being that nice kid, you know, and I guess sometimes, um, you know, being nice in my mind was that you just let things happen. You don't really cause a rift between people. And, uh, you know, as I grew up, I had to learn that, you know, you can stand up for yourself too. And so I had a lot of self-confidence issues. I had a lot of insecurities. Um, I was afraid to raise my hand in class. I don't want to draw any extra attention to myself. I was deathly afraid of girls, you know, like, and if I had a, a mutual friend tell me, hey, this girl likes you, I was like, nah, and she, no, that must be wrong. You know, I automatically kind of repelled because I didn't, at the end of the day, I didn't love myself. I didn't love who I was. And so I never believed that anybody else could love me uh, in that manner. So um, yeah, so anyways, I got picked on a lot. And so that story of David versus Goliath really came out of that my, um, you know, challenges or struggles or journey just as a little guy um, facing facing our giants. And so in the context of jujitsu, that's what it is, you know, little guy versus big guy. Mm -hmm. But in the context of life off the mats, <clears throat> in the context of life off the mats, um, you know, just having to overcome your, your greatest challenge, whether it's navigating through a relationship, um, trying to start a business uh, and see it succeed. Um, for me, again, my health, you know, people have all different types of challenges. And so that was my intent was to connect uh, that David versus Goliath message with, again, not only the physical um, difference um, or discrepancy between small and big, but just everybody is a David at some point. And we all have a Goliath that we have to overcome no matter how big we are physically, right? It's just something um, inside of us has to rise up and, and be that person that, you know, goes out there and, and slays their giants, you know? So uh, just facing their fears instead of running away from it and just pursuing growth and, and really taking a leap of faith, you know? And so that's what this journey has been about for me, um, business-wise too, you know, just putting together a logo and then figuring out a message and just getting that whole thing going has been a, uh, a leap of faith you know I didn't, I didn't really um, know exactly how I was going to do it but I knew why I was going to do it and I think that was more important uh, because I, I knew that that story would resonate with people and give people uh, hope you know and encouragement and um, again whether they're going through a hard season or they're on on the mats in jiu-jitsu and they want to quit I think we all can 
uh, be inspired by other people's stories and really have hope turn things around you know so hopeless and i just feel like um you know i don't know if this sounds cliche or whatever but i feel like god showed me that during that season of my life that i really needed to hear and it gave me the hope to to push through and my physical season didn't have didn't my circumstances didn't change overnight by any means you know and i was having to accept the season that i was in and not not fight it not start, not trying to rush it anymore i i kept putting a timeline on everything justin like now I'm going to get better in a week or like two weeks yeah. and then a month, six months, a year. And then it ended up being about two years where I finally kind of came through it. <clears throat> and um, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to embrace my season. Um, not in the sense that I'm, I don't want to get better and I don't want to improve, but I want to be okay with where I'm at now. And so that's kind of where my foundation now for my, um, my business and, and kind of this journey I'm on creating this, uh, online presence comes from it's you know I'm excited about the future I want to create something that serves other people and adds value to other people's lives but I think a lot of times <clears throat> people get caught up in and of course myself included um, this this forward thinking where we're always living in the future and instead of enjoying the present and so I really had to teach myself you know I'd put my hand in my heart and just just talk to myself I I read this book called The Healing Code, and, and uh, one of the things the author was saying was, you know, I can be uh, in the present right now. I can be happy, right? and I don't need any of my circumstances to change for me to be okay. You know, I am okay right now, and, like, that message really resonated with me because I was always living in the future. I'll be happy when uh, I feel better physically. I'll be happy when my business takes off. I'll be happy when X, Y, and Z, right? But it's like, no, you're you can find that happiness right now with, with where you're at in this season. And so that season taught me to, to find those little moments of joy, little things to celebrate. And I'm just happy that, you know, my wife was, was with me today. You know, I'm happy that my, my children are still alive, you know, just finding those little things to be grateful for. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me in a nutshell, I guess. Um, I uh, hope, hope that uh, gave you a little bit more insight. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, I for sure resonate with that story a lot. Um, pretty similar uh, childhood. I was like painfully shy, uh, definitely withdrawn because I didn't want to like draw attention on myself. Just thought I was I, not necessarily like not living up to expectations, but like I didn't want to be weighed down by expectations maybe. And uh, so I just kind of tried to coast through life and or coast through school and kind of stay under the radar. And um, yeah, I was definitely smaller and very intimidated by, by the people around me also. And it's not so much that it was like, I grew up in a dangerous place with a ton of bullies and, and um somewhere where I had to hide from people like I didn't it's not like I was walking home and getting jumped or anything I lived had a great upbringing it was just almost self-imposed worries um, mm -hmm. that I eventually had to work through and uh, I you know I'm 42 and I think I probably just did it when I was like 37 finally got all the way through there and uh, I totally agree with just working on yourself and being okay with wherever you are right now. And one of the things that I, I found pretty late on, late in life was uh, if, if I'm okay with myself and I lead a life uh, the way that I see fit uh, and just, that that should lead me to better interactions with other people. Because if I'm doing what I truly believe is right uh, for myself and the world and just and, and morally proper, uh, you know, you could get into the argument of what's morally proper, but for me, um, that that should lead to positive interactions with everybody else. And, and to extrapolate that a little further, that if people, are giving you uh, bad vibes or if they're giving you negative energy, it doesn't affect me because 
I know that as a person, I'm doing the right thing and I'm doing the best I can. And the best I can isn't always, always right and isn't always good. But at the moment, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I can't change that, you know, like I can't, I'm not going to change it because to me, I'm doing the best I can. And that's, that's all we can do. And so yeah. if somebody's given me negative energy, I don't, I don't approach it like they're giving me en- negative energy because I'm doing something wrong. I approach it as how can I help them give off better energy? Yeah. And, and if, if I am able to help all the people around me put out better energy and do the best they can and live good life. I think that's, that's like the best life I could live. I think, uh, you, you spoke, you mentioned, um, your season a lot, like your season of life. What, what, what do you mean by that? Because I, when you say season at first, I thought you were talking about like the baseball season, basketball season or whatever, and, and possibly it could be looked at that way. But as you kept on mentioning it, I was thinking, I brought it a little further and thought about it as like the place you are in life. And maybe that's what you were uh, speaking to a little bit. Can you, yeah. can you describe a little bit about like how you found that wording and, and what that means to you? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. Uh, I guess, you know, if you look at uh, calendar changes, well, here in Hawaii, we don't really have four seasons. It's just kind of 70 degrees year round <laughs> uh, on average. But, um, you know, you look at, uh, you know, spring, summer, winter, fall, and, and how seasons change, just realizing, man, I'm in a season of growth. You know, I'm in a season where the things that were on my heart and have always been with me, I'm, I'm coming to a place in time where I'm realizing some of the things that I was carrying was no longer serving me. And that, um, again, I'm a man of faith, so I believe in God, and that God was trying to deal with that part of my heart. And so instead of resisting it, like I've done in the past, you know, I, um, I'm a type A personality, you know, I like to get things done and be productive and be a go-getter. And, you know, people would describe me as ambitious and all that. And my strength is often my weakness, right? You hear a lot of people say that, and that that was true for me. Like I uh, can put my head down and tunnel through and push through and persevere but at the same time my weakness is that I didn't know how to rest and so my dad I remember running a uh, a Cutco office they used to work for a company called Cutco uh, Cutco Cutlery uh, or Vector Marketing uh, and back in 2013 I had an opportunity to run an office on Koi and I uh, opened up and we were doing really well sales were were popping and you know recruiting was high and uh, I ended up ranking number eighth in the nation that year out of over 300 branch offices. And uh, my dad could see the, the where the train was heading long before it happened. You know, he's like, son, you're going to burn out. You got to you got to slow down. And because my dad's the same way. We have two other brothers and uh, my dad and I look the least alike, but we act the most alike. We connect the most with our personalities. Uh, he's like, son, I've been there before. He's like, you're going to burn out. You need to take a day off, like schedule in a day of rest every single week. Uh, and, you know, in the Bible, people talk about the Sabbath and I, I just ignored it. You know, I was like, you know, I got to work seven days a week. That's the only way I'm going to keep up with all these other offices and, and achieve what I want. And it came out of price, you know. And so uh, I remember one morning in 2013, I had come back um, to Oahu for my brother's wedding at the time and then you know a lot was happening there's a transition and then I moved back to Kauai to finish out the campaign and um, I went through a gnarly just like mini crash I guess you could say like I just woke up one morning and I was just crying I was like whoa this is wild like where is this coming from you know but I was just going 80 miles an hour 100 miles an hour non-stop I didn't have time to process feelings and emotions and emotions those. what are these <laughs> yeah. I was like it's all about the sales let's go baby you know and I was just like go 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 and so anyways I I had a mini crash back then um what I would call just kind of a I guess a smaller realization and um honestly I didn't learn my lesson you know the pattern and the thing that was in my heart was still driving me mm-hmm. 
to become something. And, you know, I've, I, I, I have a growth mindset, like I want to continue to pursue my passions and be that, um, you know, all, all that I believe that God has made me to be, but it's like at the same time, um, just being able to, you know, push the pause button and, and just be like, man, I don't have to, like growth doesn't always come in a forward direction, you know, sometimes growth happens when you pause. And so, uh, again, I didn't learn my lesson that first time around. And so the second time around, it happened again, and it happened much, uh, uh, much more um, harshly, I guess you could say. And I just, every part of my life was affected, you know, I, I um, had two kids, my son was just born, or actually, my son wasn't yet born, he was on his way when I initially uh, started my health problems in 2020. Um, and then he was born and my wife went back to work and I was the primary caretaker. I still am like being a full-time dad is, uh, anchored in what I do because I'm working from home. So I'm having to navigate those challenges too, um, which is very rewarding, but very challenging at the same time. And so just accepting my season, you know, and so one thing that, um, my, my parents would often tell me that, um, uh, stuck with me was just do your reasonable best. Mm -hmm. You know, do your reasonable best. What does your reasonable best look like in this season of your life? You got a lot going on. You got a lot on your plate. You know, can we maybe take some things off your plate to start? You know, I started exploring those options. But um, at the end of the day, you know, some things I couldn't take off my plate. It's like, what am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm. You know, what can I do about it? And how can I continue to do my reasonable best? And so, Justin, I used to go to sleep almost every night frustrated that I would never get my to-do list done. Mm. you know and yeah. like damn I didn't get enough done today I didn't get enough done today and that was just wearing on me and so when I started adopting this concept again of you know putting my hand on my chest and saying I don't need to wait for any person thing or circumstance to change for me to be okay I'm okay with where I'm at right now uh, because God and others love me you know that was a chain uh, game changer for me and then again just accepting um, Brandon you did a good job you did your reasonable best today <laughs> And then uh, coming back to your initial question about the season, just realizing, okay, that's what's going on right now with everything I that's on my plate currently and, and just not fighting it anymore, not trying to get out of it anymore and relating it back to jujitsu because I know you train jujitsu, right? It's like sometimes we want to get out of the mount so badly that we end up extending our arms and then we get arm locked, yeah, right? Yeah. But sometimes it's not making a, a bad position worse is what I'll tell my students oftentimes. I was like, hey, you already got your guard pass, you're in side control, don't make a bad position worse. And then they panic and then they end up getting mounted and then the same process repeats itself. They push and then they get arm locked and then, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse because they're trying so hard to get out of their current situation instead of, you know, accepting that situation, analyzing it, embracing it, and then figuring out, okay, I got to be patient. Okay, I got to wait for my time to get out and looking at it kind of more from that point of view. So that's kind of how I I guess, came to that realization that this is my season. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of it is uh, uh, for, for small business owners or, or working for somebody else uh, with, a direct, with a direct pay feedback um, with, with companies like Cutco or other similar type businesses. You directly see that every minute you put in ends up being a little bit more gain for yourself. And so that's like horrifically addictive, you know, you're like, well, shit, I could stay here and watch TV or look at Instagram or play with the dogs or play with my kids, or I could put in another 10 minutes and that other 10 minutes is going to be five, 10, hundred, whatever dollars, or it's going to like progress the website a little bit more. And you're just like, all right, I got to keep at it. I got to keep getting it. And then I found for myself, it was leading into like ignoring my wife or like going to work too much or the dogs would, I don't have any kids yet. It's two more months, but so it's like, for me, it's all the dogs, uh, you know, they get rambunctious because they're not getting enough love. And, and then that feeds back into like them needing more. And then I'm getting more frustrated. And then, then the anxiety goes up right. and then I'm like, well, shit, I don't now I'm too anxious and I can't go to sleep. And then my mind's racing and yeah, taking that, taking that one day of, or two days of Sabbath, if you're lucky, uh, is, is so useful. And it lets your 
mind just decompress and reorganize and right um it is it is not a linear path that's for sure uh i was thinking about um have you ever played chinese checkers it's been a minute but yeah as a kid <laughs> it was uh we we got into it my wife and i we were taking climbing trips all over and our friend jorge was like hey, you guys ever play chinese checkers and he just crushed us at this start because you know you have your triangle of marbles and you're using you're trying to get them across the board and at the start you're just like move forward move forward move forward all right i get to jump move forward all right i get to jump again and so you're seeing this progress and you think you're doing it right and then somebody better comes along and they're they start moving sideways and backwards and jumping backwards and taking these big long routes that get them like so much further forward. And it blew my mind. I was like, I gotta, all right, I'm not doing this right. This is not, I'm not playing the linear path forward is not working for me. And as soon as you just realize that sometimes you gotta take a couple steps back, sometimes it's gonna be like all the way back, back to the start, go up and around. It's just, it, it's crazy that like Chinese checkers models after life or, or vice versa. And, and it, it just, it, uh, it appears in so many things in yeah, jujitsu. Yeah. It's like you learn a technique and, and you try it and it's not working and you're like, ah, shit, that doesn't work. I don't know why they taught, taught us that. And then you put it aside. And then like four months later, you're like, oh that was it and you bring it back and then you progress it and you put it to the side again and try something else and with rock climbing it's the same thing you you have this like big rock climb in front of you and uh there's parts you can't do and there's a thousand other rock climbs that you want to do and sometimes you just have to put it down and uh just leave it until the time is right yeah yeah great analogies i like that I like that yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's also a little cliche, but for jujitsu, people are always, you know, you hear a lot like jujitsu, not only like jujitsu is life, like that's all people want to do, but the progress in jujitsu is a lot like life. Like you have to bring stuff in and try it out and put it aside and um, yeah. just that nonlinear path. Yeah. So, Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, I was just going to uh, kind of piggyback off what you just said and talk about goals for a second, because in jujitsu, you know, sometimes instructors, they want their students to be black belts one day. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. You know, it's it's a way that we get to share our knowledge and see other people grow and develop. And, you know, it feels good to invest in somebody and then see them reach that level. But mm -hmm. as an instructor myself, realizing now that that's not my students goals all the time, you know? And so connecting that back to business, it's like, sometimes we see other people succeeding and we automatically feel like we have to adopt their goals, right? This person wants to be a black belt. This person wants to bring in, you know, a uh, million dollars in revenue a year. It's like, I gotta, I gotta get to that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, not necessarily, right? We don't have to, we should be inspired by other people's goals, but that doesn't mean we, we need to or should adopt them to be our own. Sometimes it's, um, it can be overwhelming or, or sometimes it just doesn't resonate with who we are as much, right? It's like, man, a black belt would be cool, but like, you know, I'm just, I'm not really feeling that. I don't have that internal desire. And so a lot of times when I coach people, I look for the two W's. Is there a want and is there a willing, right? Want meaning mm -hmm. is there a strong desire inside of them to go and show up and create results for themselves in this particular area on or off the mats, right? It could be in business too. And then is there a willingness, right? To go and put in the work and do what's necessary. And like you said earlier, having to navigate through left, right, forward, back, it's not always a linear path, right? Having to navigate, having the willingness to go through those challenges and, and play with it to, uh, eventually get there so um, yeah I like what you said and I think in business you know everybody has a different goal and and that should be okay you know maybe yeah. your business wants to do 100k uh, a year maybe you just want to do 50k a year there's nothing wrong with having a business that's lower revenue and yet we're always taught to look at other people and compare the size of our house or compare the quality of our car and and feel like we're not measuring up but 
man, maybe you're just happy with a 50 K business with, you know, X amount of time being put in versus, mm -hmm. you know, what it might require you to run a million dollar business a year or whatever, you know, but I think, um, at the end of the day, again, it has to resonate with us and it has to feel good. Uh, and we have to be excited about our own goals and not necessarily adopt the goals from other people. Yeah, way, a, a, a way I look at it is uh, back in grade school, uh, we were out. I don't even know why we were doing this, uh, but we were out at night looking at the stars and uh, and the teacher was like, hey, if you look up, I think it was somewhere in the Big Dipper, um, you'll see like a star right on the corner there. But it's actually two stars, but you can't see it if you look straight at it. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of like look off to the side and then that second star separates itself and you're like, oh yeah, there it is. And uh, man, I use that analogy for almost everything, whether it's like a friend that's looking for love or in looking for a relationship or somebody who's trying to find the right job. And you can tell they're just so focused on that one thing and they're just trying to drive straight at it. And I'm always like, hey man, it's finding a relationship or finding that perfect job. Sometimes you can't look straight for it. You kind of have to put it to the side just a little bit. You have to focus on whether it's yourself or your passions and, and then that that thing you're looking for will actually appear in front of you and present itself and uh i think we we get tunnel vision uh happens in rock climbing happens in jujitsu and rock climbing you're like trying really hard and you see the hold and you're like everything just shuts down and you know like rock climbing holds can be tiny and you yeah. have this like pinprick view of the wall in front of you and you're just like, oh, I got to get there. And you try your hardest and you fall off. But if you're just able to like take a big breath, there's like feet there, another hold here, more feet over here. You can like change your body position a little bit. Right. And then same thing, same thing in jujitsu. You, you'd be stuck in, stuck in side control. And you're like, I got to block that arm. I got to like keep that thing from getting my head. But really, like if you just hook the foot and move your hips out a little bit, you just got to like take that step back, look at the universe as a whole, go somewhere else. And then like that thing presents itself and right. it's hard. I mean, that's, that's probably the hardest thing. I have to remind myself of that every day. Um, and like, especially in business, there's, there is all the goals. Like, do you want to be $50,000 revenue, a hundred thousand, a million other people are like, why wouldn't you want to be giant? Why wouldn't you want to put all this time and effort into this? And there's great reward for owning a multi-million dollar business. You know, like you can set your family up forever. If your kids want to run it or be part of it, they have a stable job, but it could be at the detriment of your other passions, your mental health, all that. And so yeah. it is, it is kind of like, is the goal making money or is the goal something else? Like for me in my business, uh, the goal isn't making money. Uh, I hope I do, but the goal is a make the best product I can because that's, what's going to sell. Uh, and that's what people want. And B I've been part of the rock climbing community since I was basically eight. So that is like part of me. And I've taken, I've gotten free stuff. I've like, I've, I've gone to crags and used these crags that are all set up for rock climbers. And uh, for me, it's make good lotion, give back to the community as much as I can. And I think through those two things, it'll be that multi-million dollar business eventually. I'm not focusing on advertising and making money and like making people buy my stuff i'm focusing on what about the business makes me feel good yeah and for me that gives me a lot more energy because i'm not like ah man we only did a hundred dollars in sales yesterday how do i get that to be a thousand dollars in sales it's it's oh there's this group of people over here how can i support them best 
oh, there's this uh, wilderness area over here. How can I keep access there and keep it clean? And, and so it, like, the business isn't the business for me. The business is all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So you started, did you start uh, David versus Goliath two years ago? Um, I started my YouTube channel in October of 2020. Okay. Yeah. So a little over a year, coming up closer to a year and a half, I guess now. Okay. 2022. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so I must have been watching you like straight from the get go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what what were you uh, what were you doing before before that year? full-time father um were you still working for uh Cutco? i'm trying to figure out the time yeah, so i graduated from hawaii pacific university in 2011 okay and i went to work for Cutco as a sales rep from uh 2011 to 2012 and then 2012 i was a branch manager in kaneohe um, which is uh where i live now where i grew up and Branch offices are seasonal offices. They're only open for the summer. And so I did really well, uh, ranked top 10 in the nation uh, in that office too. And then went back to being a sales rep during uh, the fall and spring and then repeated the process in 2013 on Kauai. And then I actually did really well in Kauai to the point where I could have stayed open, but my wife or girlfriend at the time was still back uh, here and I decided to come back home and uh, there weren't any management positions available at the time, so I decided to explore other options. So I ended up working for a company called Eskimo Candy. They're a local uh, seafood distributor. So I was selling <laughs> some awesome. of the proteins um, to you know uh, hotels, uh, chefs, restaurant owners, and doing more of the B two B instead of B two C, which is great experience for me. I you know I, I really enjoyed my customers, I enjoyed the job itself. Um, I didn't really click with the culture at the job I got along with everybody and I you know I have only good things to say about them but at the end of the day just there was a disconnect between just the culture and how they kind of treated people I won't get too much into that but um, I ended up just deciding you know what this isn't for me anymore and then the timing lined up to where a full-time position opened up back with Cutco in a really good territory so I decided to take that um, I did that for 18 months and things didn't pan out how I'd hoped and the business had changed quite a bit since I had left back in 2013. Um, I didn't go back until 2017, I believe. So within that kind of three to four year period, uh, things changed a lot. And um, I, I don't regret it at all, Justin, you know, like I look back on it thinking, man, I, I didn't do that well financially. I think for the 18 months, um, you know, I profited maybe 50 to $60,000, which was cool that I still made a profit, but you know, I was, I left a six figure, almost a six figure year job. I would have made six figures that year selling seafood. And I, I felt bad, you know, I felt mm -hmm. guilty, uh, for kind of putting my wife and my family in that financial situation. But, um, looking back on it now, you know, I, I want to live a life with no regrets. And I had to, you know, like I had to just pursue that. It was, it was still a great opportunity. Uh, and that's business sometimes, you know, we got to learn from our failures. So a lot still came out of it, even though uh, I didn't thrive uh, financially. I learned more about myself. I learned more about other people. I made a lot of good connections. Um, a lot of good things came out of it still. So um, for me, it was just my relationship with failure had to evolve a little bit. You know, I viewed it as, I didn't do well financially and I suck. And, you know, I just went on the train to Suckville, you know, I just <laughs> went down that, that road and had to, again, get a different perspective coming back to what you said earlier about just that, that little shift, right. That change in perspective. And I think that's why it's so important to surround yourself with good people or just people in general, right. Just, they can see something that you don't see and um, going, wow, you know, this is, um, a huge blessing, you know, even though I, I did incur a little bit of debt at the time, it was like, no, I, I learned a lot about me and, and my relationship with failure change, which I think is super important for entrepreneurs and, and business owners and um, just people in general, right? But uh, anyways, after 
um, 2018, I think it was, it was like a year and a half. I ended up, um, uh, my wife and I got pregnant and my daughter was born and I think she was four months old at the time. And right in that transitional season, again, my wife was going back to work and I, I kind of half jokingly told her, Hey, uh, you know, what if I stay home and, and take care of a uh, baby, you know, and she's like, yeah, go ahead, you know? And, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, not really realizing what I was getting myself into <laughs> and how difficult it was so uh being a stay-at-home dad and still working for our church part-time um that was a, a challenging season and so um learning a lot about myself during that process but I really got burnt out and so it brought me back to that okay you gotta work on you first man I know you got a baby I know you got a wife but you you still have to focus on you right that that uh put on your own oxygen mask first analogy uh, like when you're on an airplane but um uh, yeah, so I, I've been, I did that for a while. And then um, I was experimenting with all different types of businesses where I could try and make money from home. Because for me, and I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, the core principle or the core value is not money. Mm -hmm. It's freedom. You know, it's the freedom to be able to work from where you want, when you want, with who you want, and just kind of have freedom throughout your schedule to, you know, play with your kids and, and just kind of create the lifestyle of your dream. So uh, for me, I, I, you know, explored uh, drop shipping. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had explored um, affiliate marketing a little bit and just kind of going down all these rabbit holes and, and really not focusing 100% on any of them. You know, it's kind of just dabbling a little bit and Dipping your toes in the water. Um, yeah. And it was OK. Like, again, I, I realized that, hey, I still got great experience from it. But it took me a while again to realize, okay, how does this connect to me and who I am and actually mean something to me beyond the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, like you mentioned earlier, we want to make money, right? And that's, um, you know, part of the goal uh, to be able to provide an, uh, a nice lifestyle from it. But what's the deeper meaning? And like with the drop shipping thing, I, I couldn't tell you what that meaning or that mission statement was, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like just to add dollars to my bank account. But um, got great experience from that. So I, I dabbled in a bunch of different opportunities. And then um, meanwhile, you know, I'm, I was still a martial arts instructor at our gym, teaching in classes five days a week in the evenings when my wife would come home. So I had a lot on my plate, which is why I think I eventually came to that point where I just crashed and burned. I just uh, I, w I wasn't willing to admit to myself as a, as a man that this is too much for me. You know, I was like, I can handle it. I can do it. I'm okay. I'm not stressed. And then boom, I just hit a crashing point where my body said enough is enough. Um, so going through that process again of healing and, and whole thing was uh, really eye opening for me. But anyways, on, on uh, getting back to your question now, um, I'm still watching my, my son now. So I have two kids. So I'll take care of my, my kids in the morning, get them ready. I'll drop my daughter off to preschool. I'll watch my son. Meanwhile, I'm, working with coaching clients online, you know, I'm uh, growing the business um, through, you know, organic social media strategies, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and um, really uh, getting the ball moving uh, there. Um, and, you know, I'm still working for our church part-time uh, where I'll, I'll give the message or the sermon once a month. Um, and again, it's some of these things I know I could take off my plate, but at the end of the day, it's like, those are non-negotiables for me, like the, the me being a dad um, and me, you know, serving uh, and pouring back into ministry and, and contributing that way. Uh, and then building my business on the side, which is still tied into jujitsu, right? Like I see it almost as one umbrella, right? It's like I'm yeah, yeah. teaching uh, jujitsu classes in person and I actually have plans to open up a gym by the summertime. I don't know if I told you that, but oh, um, the ball's the ball's rolling there. But tying in the physical academy to the online academy is really my goal, uh, especially during the pandemic, where a lot of gyms got turned upside down on their head. Right? It was like yeah. coming back out of this. Now I'm I'm like, okay, if this ever happened again, I want to I want the online to be the foundation and not the other way around. So. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking, but it's been, it's been growing and it's been, um, a process of me discovering how can I be different, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and coming back to like, I got picked on, you know, I have five, uh, what we call giddy giddies here in Hawaii, five colics in the back of my head, like, 
you know, my last name is gross. Like I got teased for being weird and for doing or, or just having weird things about me and not realizing that the things that make you weird are the things that make you you and the things that often help you stand out. And, um, you know, just stepping into that, owning that and, and using that as a way to um, help your marketing and help um, your message and your angle. And so, um, yeah, coming back to, to the online business, it's like, how can I be different? Mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of people are so conditioned to fit in. Like when I was in middle school, I was actually in the academically gifted and talented route. And I remember going, uh, I think to seventh or eighth grade, telling my mom, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to stand out. Yeah. You know, not realizing today that again, those things are, are what help you be different, especially in the online world where, you know, there's tons of health coaches, there's tons of fitness coaches, there's tons of gyms and, and a lot of different um, businesses within a certain niche. It's like, how can I craft my own category almost? And so um, I don't have to go into detail unless you want me to, but no, like, I, have yeah, that's what angle, here <laughs> yeah, I have a whole angle on like my strategy for online within the jujitsu space of how to be a little bit different. And I'll just, I'll give you the, the, did you, did you go, uh, I'm trying to remember if I read this, um, did you go, did you get a degree in business administration and marketing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I did. And honestly, you know, like college was a good experience for me to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. But my real education didn't start till just a couple of years ago where I started you know, following the Russell Brunson's of the world, the Dean Graziotti's of the world and, and taking that textbook knowledge, right? And how does that even apply to what we're doing versus learning from these guys who are actually doing it, yep. right? So yeah. uh, my, my real marketing education just started like two years ago. And I'm, I'm like, man, I was telling my mom the other day, this is the stuff I wanted to go to college for. Like, this is the stuff that gets me excited, you know? So <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I think um, that's I think that's just like jujitsu. Somebody shows you how to do a head and arm, and you're like, "All right, I think I can do that." And then you you roll over with your training partner, and you're like, "Yeah, I have no idea where my arms go." <laughs> yeah, you have to like figure it out. You have to you learned it, but you don't know it. You have to like go out into the world and like try it over and over and over. Right. Yeah, I was taught the four stages of learning is like conceptualize, memorize, internalize, and personalize. Mm -hmm. Like first you learn something, you get exposed to an idea, you're, it takes a while to conceptualize. Okay, you know, what's happening here? What am I being taught? Okay, and then you got to take it a step further. Can I remember it a week from now? Right? And then internalizing it is like a year from now, not only do I remember it, but I can't forget it. Yeah. And then personalizing it is, okay, how can I add my own spin or my own flair to it? But uh, I think you're absolutely right. You know, when it comes to business or jujitsu, even it's like um, having to make sure that you really know something. And that's usually from uh, a lot of experience and time, like playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild that like you can learn something theoretically and your brain's like, yeah, I got that but it's still so hard to implement. And then yeah. it could take, it could take two hours or three years. And, but uh, yeah, I think just embracing that whole process and, and understanding those four steps is, is a great way to start and, and learn uh, that, that it is going to be a process. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people get frustrated uh, with starting a business or, or trying to pursue their passion and they're just like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then it doesn't work, but there's so much to it. Like there's so much to every single thing in life that you really being able to break it down into four pieces or 10 pieces. You're like, Oh yeah, this is the process. This is how it's going to go. Yeah. And then you can, it kind of gives you smaller, smaller chunks to uh, chew on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so You've been doing uh, jujitsu, you said 15 years? Uh, it started in 2007. Uh, yeah, so this September, we'll, we'll make 15 years. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> what, what got you into it? Uh, I played baseball, like I mentioned earlier, in high school. Mm -hmm. um, again, I got picked on a lot, um, but 
I guess what actually got me exposed to jujitsu was one of my good buddies uh, started grappling, um, call it grappling because he wasn't really doing jujitsu, jujitsu, but like he was grappling with uh, his sister's boyfriend at the time. And he was an MMA fighter here locally. And he just invited me over to his house one day and said, hey, let's grapple. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't even know what this is. And, you know, I show up and I'm getting choked out left and right. And I was like, I don't even know what's happening, but I don't like losing. So uh, let's figure this out. And so I went on my own journey to like um, gather information. And back then in 2007, there wasn't a whole lot of information yet, like on YouTube and blogs and all that. So there's some forums that I would, I would dive into. And I remember going to the Safeway and my dad would be like buying groceries. I would sneak away to the uh, magazine aisle and read the latest like jujitsu and martial arts magazine, you know, and um, I started just doing a little bit of my own research and um, we, we had some uh, gatherings, I guess you would call it uh, outside of, outside of school, you know, where groups of us would just play around and like grapple. We'd meet up at the rec center behind our high school or at so-and-so's house. And one of my buddies who was actually training jujitsu saw me and he's like, dude, you're pretty good for like not training you know if you're gonna train why don't you train with us you know we're actually Mm -hmm. you know with professionals or people who actually do this stuff for real you know and I was like nah I'm good you know I just thought I could learn on my own and um, I was really intimidated uh, back then too because um, the culture at our gym which I'm still part of uh, it's gone through three different owners but the original owner the culture was a shark tank you know everybody stared at you when you went in nobody really said hi um, versus today it's much more family oriented um, but yeah I was, I, I was afraid to step in but when I finally did I joined my first class I saw the instructor who was on the smaller side he was rolling with a bigger purple belt and I was just amazed at his ability and what he could do mm-hmm. uh, and I was just thinking man I gotta learn this you know and I just I enjoyed it and I never looked back you know I just um, I think part of me wanted to stay competitive after uh, high school I didn't have baseball anymore but I think deep deep down I I could see what it was doing for my self-confidence mm-hmm. um, tying back to when I got bullied and also just um, me dealing with uh, stress and anxiety throughout the week being able to have a, a positive uh, platform or outlet to express myself and then just teaching me to love me, you know, like I just, I went through an amazing uh, growth process just internally on the mat as, you know, as, as I progressed externally too. But um, yeah, I guess you could say I I stayed for those reasons, but now today that, you know, I got my black belt and I want to ruin my own academy. I guess my motivation there is to give back, like you mentioned earlier to others who are in a similar journey, providing a fun community, you know, and and just a, a group of people that's the cool thing about jiu-jitsu you meet somebody online you know that's how we met it's just like hey what's up we train you know like it's cool you know it's 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 like you speak your own language and when you meet other people who speak that language it's like almost instant connections you know so yeah um yeah. having a community i think is what really keeps me keeps me going these days uh to continue i'm pretty amazed like i think i'm i'm maybe three years maybe a little over three years into the journey uh and and uh it keeps re- the community and like what happens in the gym keeps revealing all these new layers and different ways to enjoy what's going on mm-hmm. and you know when when i started it was like oh i got that first stripe that's awesome like i'm so proud of myself but man 3 years later I am so much more excited for other people to get their stripes because like, I know what it took to get that thing. And, and it's just like, I know the work they put in and the, the troubles they've been through and the pain and the suffering and the success and the failures. And man, it's like, it's almost like an exercise in empathy uh, because you get to, you get to use this, this sport to like gain all these emotions and community building and uh yeah it's wild and then just sitting down with people and rock climbing is very much a a personal pursuit and sometimes there's one other person with you your belay partner and that's a pretty tight-knit 
uh, connection you have because they're like literally in charge of your life while right. they're playing you. And uh, but man, in the gym, it is a team. I've never been like a team sport kind of person, and just having all these connections with such a large number of people is like pretty unique yeah. for me. I'm mostly yeah. an introvert. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you pointed that out because that makes me realize why I love jujitsu and why I love business, you know, and why, um, although I love baseball, sometimes what I didn't like about baseball is the success or the end result, win or lose could be, uh, because one person, you know, made an error Mm -hmm. and I like jujitsu because it's almost like you train as a team, but when it's time to go out there, it is an individual thing where you're stepping on the mat with one other person. So it kind of, everything falls back on your shoulders. And I kind of view entrepreneurship or business in a similar fashion where you build a team and, you know, you uh, raise other people up and you leverage your uh, abilities um, through other people. But at the end of the day, it comes back to that leader, that entrepreneur, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so there's, there's, that, that, there's that sense of ownership or like, you know, at the end of the day, if things go south, you know, it kind of falls back on on the leadership, um, which doesn't always have to be the owner per se, depending on the company structure, right? But like, there's that element where there's teamwork, but then there's also that individual responsibility, which I like. Yeah, that's wild. That's a really good analogy. I like that. Did you always want to uh, make jujitsu into uh, a business or part Mm -hmm. of your, part of your livelihood or, or make it more than just going and training? Like when, when did you see, when did you see that? Was it like straight away a white belt? You're like, Oh dude, I got to make this job or, and then did it go away and then come back or how that, how that pan out? I kind of always wanted to run my own academy. I think I had that in my sights probably around blue or purple belt. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom would say like, she would always see me coaching other kids on the baseball field. And I didn't even notice what I was doing, but she's like, you're coaching them. You know, you love coaching. I was like, yeah, I do. You know, I guess I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I had that um, realization from when I was little. And we also had like market days in in school where you could come up with a product, a service or an idea and sell it for fake money, like in school. school. I remember um, I did like, um, I, I got a bunch of friends together and I filmed the skateboarding. So I made a cool video of it back then. And uh, this is man, back in the nineties, you know, and the cameras are old school and stuff. And I, I brought a TV to class and I set up a TV and played that recording of, uh, you know, just our little skate video that we made and I sold root beer floats. So like people would drink and eat the root beer floats while they watched uh, the That's video. Awesome. And like, that was my way to kind of express my entrepreneurship uh, skills or spirit and uh, just getting that affirmation from my mom going that was really creative you know and I was like oh okay cool so uh, come down the road you know I knew I wanted to be a coach and I knew like I have the entrepreneur bug in me it's like how can I join the two together cool. and then wanting to tie it to a passion and you know I think some people have mixed feelings like should you make your passion your business because if that happens then is it not going to be your passion anymore because then you have to do it you know so not going to lie there is that element there at times where it's like okay I have to go to the gym right I don't have an option anymore but man at the end of the day like I always wanted to tie the two together somehow because I mean they say like even a bad day on the mats is still a good day you know and I feel that way and um although I I feel personally like when I get my physical academy going uh, honestly, I don't want to be there every night. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be able to raise up a team uh, and partner. I have a partner in mind too, who's going to be doing a lot of the um, operational side, uh, and I can focus on my strengths, which I feel like are the business, and and also run classes too. But developing leader and creating culture and doing that whole thing. But um, yeah, I guess to get back to your question again, uh, right around blue or purple belt. But I again going through that season where I was um, two thousand. Uh, 17, 18, 19, like when I was first staying home with my daughter, figuring things out, I was just realizing, man, I know I want to uh, make a living online. I know I want to create a business. I know I love coaching, just slowly pulling the pieces together and drawing from different life experiences. And 
Um, you know, I think we all have that. We all have a, a unique combination of personality, of skill sets, of life experiences, of passion that, you know, we can draw on to create something beautiful, to create something a little bit different. So that's, that's kind of how it happened for me. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you were earlier, you're <clears throat> talking about what your unique take was going to be. Uh, can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. My unique take on uh, what exactly? Oh, uh, on how you're, how are you going to, uh, structure? I don't, I don't exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, with the with the oh. business. Um, yeah, I don't want to go too far into it because it's it's Fine. still in the, uh, the building phase, and um, I feel like it's um, again going to be very different. But I'll just say this: like, I see it as more of a higher ticket, uh, higher interaction than what's mm -hmm. currently out there. You know, um, a lot of what I see, and correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you've experienced something different, but. I see a lot of people making money through instructionals. Mm -hmm. uh, and unless you're Gordon Ryan in the top of the top, you're probably not selling too many instructionals to actually make a living from. I, I heard him quickly mention how many instructionals he sells. Oh, Holy yeah. Hell. Yeah. That's incredible. yeah. I saw him make a post about it, too. I'm like, OK, I guess you can do it. But I think okay. the amount of people who do it are few and far between. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And then there's the membership route. Uh, you know, I see like MG in action um aoj you know 25 bucks a month or 250 a year and then you got guys nowadays doing um you know either one-off privates 100 bucks a private lesson or group package you know four for 300 or whatever and my idea was to kind of just do it on a longer term basis because you and i both know it takes time yeah to, to see that transformation on the mats and and also in here and um uh, I have it structured around three main pillars, strategy, mindset, accountability. It's the three main pillars that I feel like supplement the physical gym and that the physical gym doesn't always address strategy being, is it customized to you, your body type, your age, your mobility, uh, your game, your personality in real time, okay. right? Uh, Cause a lot of times people are watching instructionals and then they try to do the moves and there's a disconnect because a person on the other end, they don't know where that person's at in their journey. Yeah, and what they need um, and even their learning style for that matter. But uh, so strategy and then mindset, you know, a lot of times people walk in and they're just thrown right into the fire, man, sink or swim, baby. And a lot of people don't make it. I think the statistics from the Gracie brothers are 10%, right? 10 out of a hundred new students will actually make it to blue belt. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And then you and I both know people don't always go past blue belt even, but um, I think a lot of that has to do with mindset and um, how we're dealing with challenges and adversities, how we're yeah. setting proper expectations and standards and all that. Um, so that's the second pillar I focus on with my clients is mindset. And then the third is accountability. You know, it's just people pay big money for a personal trainer to just say, hey, did you do what you're supposed to do today? <laughs> you yeah. know, and so yeah, well. people view uh, accountability sometimes as micromanaging. That's not how I view it. I view it more as, um, hey, I'm just going to be there to be a reminder and to keep you on track to what you said you wanted to do. I'm That's not trying awesome. to force you to do anything and look over your shoulder, but hey, you said this was important to you. I just want to come alongside you and remind you. Yeah. So with my clients, you know, I meet with them, most of them once a week. Um, they're showing up and a lot of the feedback I'm getting is, man, coach, I knew you're going to ask me that. And so I did it this week. You know, just the fact that they had to do that was um you know giving them an action step and then going to be there again next week they, they you know that that helps people create results so um that's it in a nutshell it's a little bit longer term program a little bit more intimate but um i have ideas to uh scale and build which um, maybe you and i can have a conversation about that later uh if you're more interested in it but for sure yeah. but that sounds awesome uh those are three things that i try and focus on uh in life in general <clears throat> And uh, so I think I, I think that's great to be able to feed into people. Um, and man, that sounds sounds like a, a great uh, opportunity that you're offering. Um, well, we've been here about an hour. I think I could probably talk to you forever. Uh, it's been super fun. <laughs> it's fun. Um, hope I enjoyed we, it. I hope uh, maybe let's get together in a little bit and do it again sometime. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, what's your Instagram? Your, your yeah, YouTube? if, if uh, there's any listeners out there that uh, want to follow me on Instagram, it's at David versus Goliath BJJ. Uh, same thing on YouTube at David versus Goliath BJJ. And then um, uh, I also have a free ebook um, if people want to check that out. Um, it's 10 things um, every guy needs to th- uh, thrive and survive against the big guys in their gym. They can go to bjjgiantslayer.com, bjjgiantslayer.com. Awesome. I feel like we just scratched the surface. I honestly, like, I could talk about this forever. Yeah, um, cool. I mean, if you want to do a part two someday, let me know. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, I know I know. my wife wants to come to Hawaii. Maybe, maybe I'll yeah, keep- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if it's uh, summer, uh, summertime is looking like the timeline. So hopefully I'll have the, the physical academy going by then and awesome. uh, getting a train with you too. That, that'd be great. I think there's a uh, some sort of uh, space time portal from Hawaii to Bend, Oregon. There's a <laughs> lot of uh, Hawaii people who lived in Hawaii move here. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so maybe I can find that portal and head over. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I got to I'm going to go train a little bit. And cool. Uh, Let's catch up. Let's catch yeah. up down, down the line. It's been a pleasure. Sounds good. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, we'll talk soon, man. I appreciate it. All right. Have Bye. a great day. Take care.